Thank you for that smattering of applause. <laughs> Woo! So, we're doing a panel. What do you got? I think you know who... Anyone doesn't know why they're here? <laughs> yeah, definitely that kid. Okay. I, I don't know, the lack of Fez is throwing me off. Huh? The lack of Fez is throwing me off. The Fez is, is now my fighting Fez. Indication you're my drinking Fez. Uh -huh. So you will see it at Super Arc Fight. By the way, hey, here's the, moment. Here's the opening start. What? Super Arc Fight. You know what Super Art Fight is? Yeah. 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 Okay. If you don't, Super Art Fight is an awesome competitive art. Really? Is it working? No. Not the other one. Turn on with Super Second. It is delayed. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Some more too? Yeah, sure. They also apparently say goodbye when you turn them off. Well, shit. Let's find out. Nah. <laughs> it says it on it. I thought there would be a voice saying <laughs> Elevator, yeah, the one in the Hotel for Marriott is just like, hey, what are you going to do on the 19th floor? <laughs> Please, let's Hey, we've been here for uh, 30 seconds. I'm already uncomfortable. That's great. <laughs> I'm sorry. Taking too long. Super art fight. Yes. Tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon. It is competitive quick draw. Two artists, one giant canvas, every five minutes a new random topic, and we draw our asses off, and... Um, the audience decides the winner. So, I am the title bout facing off with Nick uh, Borkowitz of Ghost Free Hood. This is the third time I've met this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and I've beaten him twice. He beat you once? Oh, yeah, oh, I just did the math wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, he still thinks he can beat me. So, I need you to come and help me make this a decisive put down so he can move on with his life. <laughs> okay? Laura will also give each of you a dollar. Okay. <laughs> Deal. But it's Mexican oh, dollars. Cool. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Dollars. Wait a minute. <laughs> what do they have? No, no, that's not it. They just trade in beans, no? Thanks. <laughs> Tequila worms for everybody. <laughs> that's your big intro? No, it's about Super Earth Fire. So now what? This is Ryan Somer. He writes a shit ton of comics every week for your enjoyment. And then you draw that. I'm Lar. I'm your Lar. I'm your largest. <laughs> so, um, I think what we're going to do here is, there's enough people here, so we can do a little um, uh, question and answer period. That seems to work the best. Uh, talk about at least I could do, looking for group, any, uh, gutters, um, anything you guys want to talk about. Um, in order to ask a question, you must stand up and take off your pants. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, shock here, here, and then this person. Yes. <laughs> Shocking. Only the guy stood up. That's, <laughs> that's great. So, uh, raise your hand and I'll just pick you up. That seems like the best route. Any questions? Come on! <laughs> you first, sir. Uh, this was the uh, least I could do. I remember seeing you had ads for the for an animated series for a while. Is yes. that still happening? Or? What happened with the uh, least I could do animated series was we had to deal with, uh, in uh, Canada, everyone can hear me, right? I don't have to use the mic? Yeah. Okay. Um, in Canada, our, I don't want to use the mic, because it didn't say goodbye. Um, <laughs> Damn, 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 damn. Oh, and this is what we're doing now. Ah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in Canada, our version of the uh, Cartoon Network is called uh, Teletoon. Um, it's a pretty shitty, shitty, shitty network. I can't stress that enough. Um, they have no money and they do everything wrong. Um, so we had a 13 episode uh, commitment with them. Um, the problem is, because how in Canada works, nothing gets made without being um, funded by the government. Because, well, we don't have American money. That's uh, just how it works. So the, the problem there is once you start using the government's money, you don't really care as much, right? So you want to do things as cheaply as possible. And the producers and the company we were working with wants to make sure they pocket most of the money. So they weren't concerned about a second season. They just want to make the money off the first season and try and pocket as much cash as humanly possible. The other problem was in Canada, 
we think we're like really unique, and we want to really keep that distinctiveness. That's a word, right? Yeah. Yes. It is now. Unique. Thank you. Um, so because of that, they want the show to be Canadian. The problem is, if you make the show really Canadian, it bars us from ever selling it anywhere else. Their definition of Canadian is like uh, the cartoon should be about prairie folk, uh, Anne of Green Gables, or maritime fishermen. I mean, like, there's just no, just, does anyone have a regular life in Canada anymore? To give you that specific example, um, they wanted Issa to be an Inuit character. Oh. Yeah, because, <laughs> You're kidding. No. Um, they wanted Issa to be Inuit. Um, the whole thing had to be said in Toronto. Mick always had to wear a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. Oh. All the time. Oh. And it was, those, like, now picture me I'm in my office, I'm reading these notes, I'm like, okay. <laughs> And uh, so we told him to fuck off, and we said, thank you, but no thanks. We let the period lapse, and now we're trying to move it to the States and just... Honestly, in the end, I think we're just going to fund the thing ourselves and just do it online, because why I'm, it's... To go to TV right now feels like very backwards for us, because like, I don't like having an editor. I don't like when people tell us what to do. I don't want to be told what we can, can't say. If this is too offensive. Yes, we're. Talk about the fishing pole. Well, you've already got the name of the internet. You told me what to eat. Somebody wrote a script. Because this is the other frustrating thing. It took you like a year and a half to get them to, oh, like, to yes. write the goddamn script. They didn't want me to write Because he wasn't a name in Canadian animation. It's like, it's Canadian animation. There's no names in writers. <laughs> So they had this, and they just kept throwing money at these people who didn't get it, or were just ripping jokes off right from the, the strips, which they weren't supposed to do, they were supposed to come with original material. So I would get calls from him coming back after his meetings, where essentially I was talking him down for preventing road rage. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be, on, he'd be on his hands free, kind of going, and I was like, okay, just what happened? Just breathe. And, you know how Noel and Rain always go for a walk in the park? Yes. It's yeah. one of those settings, there's a skyline behind them, occasionally there's street people or people in the park or whatever. Hey, how about they go fishing? <laughs> <laughs> what, like, notice I'm leaving off the G, like at a fishing hole. It's like, this like, is fucking American, like... It, this is it's the 1950s, in, they're not going fishing. It's set in the city, modern environment. This is an urban setting for the strip. Yeah, These are I, not people who go fishing. Uh, they gave, uh, so, in the end of what happened there actually was, they gave this guy uh, $26,000 um, to write a script. And I read through it, and I believe I looked up, and I said, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> um, it was absolutely, hi, it was absolutely horrible. So in the end, I ended up rewriting the pilot script, and the script that I wrote ended up being the one that everyone liked. They're like, one guy yes. said to me, one guy said to me, he's like, hey, you really seem to know the characters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because I made them. <laughs> I was like, I got the voice right. I say it again, I will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's happening, at least I do, uh, serious. Next question. <laughs> Cat ears in the back. Uh, yes, in the beginning you had Richard, very bloody, very sadistic. Uh, basically, one of the most evil villains that you could ever think of that you just loved. And then you made him weird. <laughs> the problem is, what was. Wait, wait, oh, yeah, there's no question. What's the question? Vi violent, bloody, sadistic is baseline normal for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Like, I'm just thinking, what did he last kill? <laughs> kind of. Uh, Actually, that, no, that's that, Monday's that trip. That he put on the scroll, maybe? Huh? No, the people that, in the volcano. The, the, the dude in the... the like, I mean... Volcano. <laughs> oh, yeah, disturbing the, oh, yeah, when they went to the portal. <laughs> <laughs> he, the portal. he killed the portal guy. Oh, yeah, he killed the, the guy, guy in the portal. That killed the portal, but I mean, yeah. like, you know, see, so he wore that one guy as a cape. Um, he had the hat. Of oh, actually. <laughs> yep. The, the, the kitty hat. The kitty hat was actually... Like, yeah, what's, what's your question? It's like, why are you moving him... A lot farther away from the just bloody to the more weird. The problem with uh, the the problem with the character like Richard that we kind of figure out really soon, really quickly. One starting out, she is that he becomes a one-note character. 
And I didn't want him to be just be a throwaway joke. And if, if all we did was just he kills people, and he kills people, and he kills people, but there's no death, there's, there's, you're not interested in him, right? We want to build a backstory. We want to show, you know, if you look closely, you're going to see little glimpses of his past life. And as time goes on, you're going to see more. And as we learn, there is a reason for everything he's doing. And him meeting Kale was not just happenstance. Um, we want to, you know. I guess it, see, sometimes um, it's also not as much fun to draw if he's killing the same way. So there, there are times when Somer scripts are. Don't break it. No. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when Somer will, will lay out things in, in a little more detail for me in terms of what he wants happening because things need significant beats. And there are times where he'll just kind of say, um, you know, Richard kicks ass. <laughs> those, those are my favorite scripts to write. <laughs> <laughs> those are usually ones where I'm like, really? Okay. Like, uh, time to bust in a few ninja movies for inspiration and off I go. But they're, I mean, they take more time for me to, to visually choreograph, but they are a lot of fun for me at the same time. And I'm not going to have him just set everyone on fire the same way. Because that's boring as well. That's again the main the thing one is that we, we we don't want him to be just this two-dimensional you know character. He's a part of the story. He's an important part. He's not just a support character. There is depth to him. We just matter of finding out what that is. And from time to time, he's going to do some stuff that you're not going to understand. But I hope that you know you least still enjoy his antics and uh, tune in, or I'll find you because now I know you have cat ears. <laughs> you with the face. <laughs> I do have a case. Um, so far, I'm not to say, uh, in the trial of Richard, we saw the what, beginning of his backstory, uh, glimpses into his who he is. Um, are you guys going to get into that? Soon? Yes. The, the, the oh, thing yeah, that people it seemed like it was a boy. <laughs> the, the thing that people don't, don't realize is that there's you do you have seen more glimpses than you actually think. We put in like simple little, little things like. Have you noticed there's a lot of time where Richard is doing stuff with plants? There's a lot of little yeah. elements where Richard is digging, he's planting something. Pay attention for small moments like that, because that's going to kind of turn in. The thing is, when Mario and I started the story, we kind of really, we took the time to really plan it out. So something that happens in the second page is really going to affect what's going to happen in page 400, which is soon. Every now and then he forgets to tell me something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, he's like, no, it's got to be this, like, why? Oh, you're keeping secrets. <laughs> <laughs> what Marta said was, I'm just, just making this up as like go along. <laughs> Sometimes he tells me that too, because I'm like, what is that? He's like, no, I don't know, but I know I want this. I need to lay the ground for this. And I'm like, that's okay, because then I will spin something that will spin off his creativity, and it becomes, it increases the collaboration. Um, Where's like, the story going? Well, what the fun out? No, but like funny. It's a perfect example of an evolution. Yeah. Because we wanted an animal familiar, but at the later point, but we did the, the miniaturization of Richard, we added the bunny, and the bunny was just a throwaway. The thing is, I like drawing bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Once they left, I kept the bunny with them. And then suddenly it was like, oh fuck, we can use the bunny, it's already there. No, 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 they're not supposed to know that. <laughs> the bunny was always on the first page. <laughs> the bunny was on the first page. Sorry. The bunny. You're yeah. keeping those secrets. We gotta go over the notes before we come Well, here. I didn't know you were gonna, like, out me. <laughs> That's I just thought we already knew the bunny was important. It never happened any other time. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> yes. So, um, I, I saw a while ago you guys had a little ad like you're looking for people to do a Flash game, I think? Yes. So how has that been going? What's the situation? Well, Flash sucks balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Yeah, me and Steve Jobs agree. Um, <laughs> we're doing, um, we are working on two um, projects. One is for the, um, uh, the, the Apple Store, um, for the, uh, we're doing an iPad game. Uh, working on that, and we're also doing a least I do game as well. So one for LFG, and one for least I could do. Um, so yeah, it's going. And we're working on hopefully getting the comics. Like a better app for that too. Yeah, because it's shit. Yeah, we're not having that. Um, but yeah, so we're, we are looking in, but I'm trying to get it away from Flash. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, originally, we wanted to do, like try some like online Flash stuff, but everything. It's just such a pain in the ass to work with, and it's not. So we said fuck it, and we just moved in a different direction. Anybody here under 18, by the way? 
Well, I'm going to swear anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, tough shit. Next question. You, sir. Yeah, I noticed that uh, a lot of the buildings that you put into looking for proof uh, don't have a tendency of staying very long. They don't have any kind of longevity. You have such dynamic uh, heroes and quasi villains, like with Richard especially. I was wondering if you were planning on putting anyone who could stand up against them long term. Like, I realize you have the invading army coming yeah. in, but. Well, we, we've been kind of trying, yeah, we've, 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 we've been trying to like really build up the Elune character. And also his father, who is the commander, so we really wanted to show that. And I thought that during uh, the war with the commander, when he was uh, took over the Blood Ridge, I felt he became that really menacing character. That very because he was smart, he was calculating, and he kicked the shit out of the kale. Um, so we were trying to build that up, and then he, of course, switched sides, or did he? Um, mm -hmm. So I think the thing for for some of our readers is that. Um, and, and we've had we've had fan mail like this where it's just like they want the entire backstory right away. It's like no, that's not how you tell a good story. It's like when people start a comic saying, "Hi, welcome to my comic." No, it's like wrong. You don't have to introduce all your characters and all their backstory and all their motivations all at once. You know, just like good fantasy has that epic quality, has that scale, that mammoth. You it's know, that, environment that you can really stretch your elbows in and move around. So you're, it takes, it takes a, a progression of time to tease you with these bits and bring it back. So in the short term, you're enjoying, you know, as you said, the antics. Yeah. But the long term, these elements are going to tie together. It's the same way how it took 12 issues before we really showed you Kale backstory. You know, <laughs> that, 12 issues, that's uh, four years. <laughs> You know, so we're we are taking our time. You you, you know you, you see a bit of uh, you saw a bit of uh, Pella's backstory, and you see you know there's a lot of uh, we really want to explore more of Benny. You know we still don't understand how she ended up with the Blood Ridge. Um, you know we know that she was in prison with Crunch. Yeah. Um, but why did they escape? Why did he take this little girl with him? Why did he raise her? You know, so there's a whole bunch of those types of questions that we we are going to answer, but. We do two pages a week, so it's it is gonna take time. But hopefully, you will see some menacing villains soon, like him, bro. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> you sir. Um, what about the movie? Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. The movie, it is coming. Let me just re promise you that it is coming. The script is written. The financing is in place. We are just literally waiting for the government of Canada to sign a goddamn form. <laughs> um, it is going to be, it's a co-production between Canada, the U.S. and Singapore. Canada, the U.S., no problem. But apparently Singapore and Canada don't get along super well. So they've been going back and forth forever. Why Singapore? Um, cheap labor. <laughs> oh, sorry, do you want me to lie, Mick? Uh, no, it's cheap labor. <laughs> Dude. We're coming to an anime con. Can you imagine the sex tour cons we can go to in Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Singapore. Uh, it was. I'd actually done some work with a studio in China, and it was it was it was a miserable experience. Um, did a couple of things in India. I didn't like it. Um, this studio in, in Singapore does some work that is honestly it is gorgeous. It's just stunning. Did Did anyone remember the? Uh, no, I don't want to talk about it. No, because it was funny. But it's so bad. I know, but that's why it's funny. I felt this is the example. Okay, the funny. Nullos commercial we did online for yeah. Nullos, <laughs> which was a pill you take, took to make yourself stink less, yeah. which I still think we should have a jar full wrapped as candy on our table. <laughs> <laughs> but the studios, the example animation they sent us was fantastic. Really nice. The final product they sent us was shit. Was shit. <laughs> and suddenly, their English language skills to complain to became shit as well. And it's like, I met these guys. Like, I met them in France, we sat down, we... <laughs> Cobra Commander and damn it just showed up. That's like... That's not... The That's not something you see often. <laughs> oh, I guess, unless you're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like... Anybody just... else see the beaker? Yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> If someone has a video camera, I want to tackle that guy, and then I want to like put in the sound effects after. Me 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 me. Sorry. 
you were saying. No, I was just pointing out that just like, I mean, they totally fucked us on that. Yeah. And suddenly there was no time to do it over, and there was no ability to explain to them, I, apparently, uh, that I, they had fucked us over. And when I had to, like, debut that thing, I never felt like I had crawled out my own asshole more. <laughs> because Randy had signed a contract with these Nalo people that we had to show this video. I'm like, I don't wanna. And everything about it is bad. Everything. But we had to show good. The voices were good. Yeah, some of the voices were, yeah. were good. Um, but the animation was shit. It was a goddamn infomercial. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I was talking about the movie. Yeah, Wait, movie. Did we give a firm description of that? Yeah? No, you, we were talking about Canada Singapore. Oh, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Um, yeah. we're, hoping, we're hoping that this is the year we finally go into uh, full production. But everything, like, literally, the model sheets are done, the script is written, the back, like, everything is ready to go. We just need the final cash infusion, um, and then it's off. Um, but it's, it's going to be quite, it's a much bigger film than we had anticipated. When we first started doing the thing, we were going to spend maybe a million dollars. Maybe. And for animation, that's quite on the low end. Now we're at a budget of 18 million. Um, we're looking at, we're gonna, it's going to be in a few theaters as well. So we're going to have a feature film that's release. Like the, the production company we're with has access to that distribution. So it, it's, it's a much bigger deal. It's just taking longer. But it is coming. In I will rise from the goddamn In 2008. Rain, if I have to. <laughs> 2008. You with the hat. Um, oh, for the movies, uh, what's the do with the plot for that? I'm not asking for spoilers or anything, but you know, how are you going to fit it? Is it going to work with storyline? It is. It's going to actually. Um, it's We've got Julie Andrews. Andrews playing Benny. <laughs> <laughs> the first, uh, the first film, because they they want to make three, is actually it's a retelling of uh, the first volume of LFG. Um, because their concern there is they want to bring people into the world, like. They obviously want to sell you guys tickets, but they want to sell people who've never heard of LFG tickets as well. So they want to retell the beginning, but we're, we're enhancing it quite a bit. Uh, in addition to Slaughter of the World, there's going to be seven other full musical numbers in there. Oh, it's Slaughter of the World? Yes, it's now back in. Um, there's some like really fantastic numbers. Um, we, some of the later stuff that we've done, we've also brought into this film. My first uh, draft <laughs> was a seven-hour film, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, uh, can you, uh, would you mind cutting that down a bit? We got to trim it up. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So it was like a three-and-a-half-hour film. <laughs> like, you got to keep going. I'm like, God, this, this, yeah, this, <laughs> this stole my line, dear. Oh. Uh, you, she's heard me say this, where I get one of your scripts going, this thing's is fucking Peter Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to draw this. Well, thankfully, you, you've stopped saying epic. Because yes. I was getting like anxiety attacks when I'd open a script and see epic shot. Because it would be like, God. it would be like, in brackets, it would be like page one in brackets, epic shot, Lar, have fun, in brackets. <laughs> that was the whole file. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, like, be like, okay, I need about five thousand orcs on this side, like regiments of twelve. What was the best? Purple buckles. It was. That's <laughs> all night. Okay, listen, R Richard's army. There has to be hundred and forty-six skeleton. Each skeleton has to have a different type of sword. Each sword has to have a different colored diamond, but each diamond has to have 126 facets. Each facet has to tell a story of that skeleton's family. <laughs> so where are they? They're behind the hill. They're just going to the shot. <laughs> Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, last year you guys had talked about, um, this is actually for the least I could do, uh, you had talked about um, redoing some of your old comics uh, over yeah. again. Um, and then you did the time travel arc. I was just wondering, if, is that the end of it? or? No, we were talking about like black and white, where I redrew Trevor's comics. Uh, no, you had mentioned actually redoing some of the original stuff um, from the, like when you just started off. That's, sorry, that's, that's what it was. Trevor Adams, who did the first 120, yeah. 425 strips, um, you know, fans are completists, and they wanted those strips in print form. The problem was, when Somer and Trevor were beginning, they didn't understand those technical needs for printing, and Trevor didn't create them in high resolution. There are no high res files to print, and if you know anything about printing, 
Um, you know, it's one thing to print something off the computer screen, but to send those files to a proper, you know, high-end printing, like we do for our books, wouldn't work. They blur, they get distorted, you get the jaggies or whatever. Um, so I, re I took the original scripts and I redrew in my style those scripts. Oh, okay. Because, uh, actually, so you spent quite a time trying to see if anyone could convert them, could somehow up res them. Yeah, I, I and tried. And the experiments, like, the closest we got, somebody ran okay. them through some sort of vectorization. And it, it, it buggered up all the type. Uh, it changed all the lines, so things got kind of chunky. I mean, it was legible, but everything would have had to be retypeset. Um, all, all the borders would have to be redrawn. You know, it, it would have been, you know, just hiring some intern to trace them. Hey, there's, there's a guy over here who has a question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sousa, um, do you plan on redoing uh, Chad's work? <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't. I won't say it hasn't occurred to me. Then why don't you? I'm, I'm sorry to be rude, but why don't you get off your lazy ass and do it? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you? Mister Susan, I'm sorry if I'm making you uncomfortable. I'm sorry, you're mumbling. <laughs> Mumbler. Um, I. It. Okay, fine. Fuck. Bro, I want to do this. It's just a question of finding the time in the schedule. Oh, I do I'm kind of fucking busy I this do, summer. I do nine strips a week. Oh, look at me. Yeah, and then, and then, we'll get people saying, well, if you have time to do chats work again, why can't you do another LFG? I don't, people ask me that. People are like, please do more LFG a week. I'm like, I'd love to. My artist is so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right. How many hours Everyone a week do you do? Look the work? other way while I kill him like a dog in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Next oh. question. You, young lady. I suppose then uh, you did work on Brahman uh, before you started working on LFG. I suppose then because of the amount of strips you do each week, that Brahman is officially out of the question. Well, none of you guys ever bought Brahman, which was a real problem. All right, I think. Oh, do you think? I think you're an artist. You're people are ahead of the curve. Has anyone read the Broadband comic besides my family? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> 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 All right. All, we did a we did a Broadband comic. I think we were ahead of our we were ahead of our reputation at that point. But yeah. every every person who reads it now says, "Where's the second issue?" It's again written. So that someday I think we fun to do a release online when I'm like. On a desert island, and I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> are you going to are you, are you have like Wi Fi in those islands? Yeah, I'm going to have a pizza joint, Wi Fi, and a stack of DVDs to watch. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> well, well, but then you'll have the DVDs to watch instead of. But doing... once I've finished watching the DVDs, <laughs> you'll you just start the movies I still have in their wrappers that I haven't seen. I know, they're all from me. <laughs> no, not just from you. Really? What about Farscape? You watch Farscape yet? <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Next question. Saying I bought more than just what you give me. That's a load of crap. You, I can't see if. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, I like gutters a lot. Where did the idea come from and where is it going? It was mine, not the good Lar. What? <laughs> <laughs> Lar and I. Ah! Yeah, uh, uh, sexual harassment. Officer, you should be here. Um, crap. Uh, I like where this is going. Gutter is the front row. Um, shit, what was the question? Got got her. Her. <laughs> yes. um, I don't know if you guys remember, because um, most of you are probably too young, but Laura and I used to do, <laughs> used to do a trip that nobody read, um, except my mother when she was talking to me, called uh, In Other News. Yeah. And uh, it was a... Um, Commentary. It was a political strip, it was, it was like an editorial comic, but instead of like politics, it was all about like, celebrities and stuff, and it was, yeah. it was great fun. And, and I am now addicted to bad celebrity gossip because of this man. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. And then a little while ago, I had this idea that wouldn't it be funny if there was this type of editorial thing, but in you know the comics world with all the heroes and everything going on? There's it's such a fun there's like myriads of worlds, you know, to that we get the plan. So I said, okay, we're going to do a one panel thing called Gutters, you know. Yeah. And I had an artist, this very lovely girl named uh, Karin, and I sent her the first script that was supposed to just fit one panel. And it was like, it was a giant strip. You can't write one panel anymore. You just, 
I, I saw the script, and I'm like, this this can't be told in one panel. I'm like, this sure, it's a multi-panel layout. And the the your Corinne was kind of like, I said, let her. And and so to to make my point, I quickly sketched it out. I said, this is how it would work better broken up. And I said, yeah, this does work better. Lar was right. Happy? Also, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Obama was teacher. And then, because of, I saw that, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun, instead of just doing one artist, to just rotate the artist and have, you know, do it that way, and get, like, some big names in comics, some up-and-comers, and, you know... <laughs> Really? <laughs> to the shower room. To the shower room? <laughs> shower room. Shower room. Shower room. Shower room. So many. It's so fun to play in the different sandboxes. Um, and that's what comics do. You know, the artistic teams change, but the characters continue. And so that's, beca that's become the real exciting. And also, it gives me uh, an, an excuse to, to participate in gutters because I can't draw them all. Even if I. You know, at the time though, it wouldn't be the best idea. But it's uh, it's it's you know we're about almost a month in, and yeah. it's been going great, and we're ahead on it, and it's just been a blast to do, and I hope you guys enjoy it and keep uh, reading it, um, or I'll find you. Yeah, you again. <laughs> Next question, Doctor. You touched on this a bit with the movie thing. You say there's going to be other musical numbers? Yeah. Like, who's going to be singing them? Like, are they going to be Richard stuff or other people? Other people. Well, there's Richard, there's a great duet with uh, Kale and Richard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sung to a whole new world, by the way, so you guys should really enjoy that. Um, there is, um, Crunch has a song. That is, Crunch? Yeah, that is quite enjoyable. Um, Benny has a song which you can't really sing. Uh, there's two ensemble numbers, and the actual um, the gnomes have a song as well. <laughs> is it going to be depre deprecating them? Is it going to be deprecating? Is it be making fun of gnomes? I know what deprecating means. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we make fun of gnomes. Awesome. Are you a gnome? Love making fun of gnomes. Sir, are all of the songs going to be like Disney parodies? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Is there any kind of copyright infringement? What's that? You can parody. It's in copyright. Right? Yeah. The, yeah there, 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 find copyright. There is the parody law. Um, because if you look at the Star of the World, for example, if you noticed, if you compare the music that we did compared to the original, we had it changed just enough to squeak under. The other thing, too, is that it's, I mean, there, there's a standard kind of book of fees, if you want if you want to play that song with your orchestra, you buy the license to the music. You can't take my orchestra's version of it, but you can make your own. Hmm. So they've got their money for the song. And then the parody is, is covered in there. So the fact that we also employed, you know, the musical talent to create it and the singers and the whole thing kind of adds to it being its own original work. Like the, there's already that the, uh, the guy who uh, voices uh, Richard, a guy named Dave Mitchell, he um, was actually at Disney doing an audition, and he played them Star of the World, and it's gone through the whole company, and they love it. He got more to Disney because of it. Yeah, and we haven't gotten sued, so, uh, hey. <laughs> you have a question, my dear. Yes, um, speaking of being sued, um, are you worried that uh, DC, famous. Marvel, and all the other comics that you guys are making fun of in the authors and all that, like you did the Warren Ellis spoof? Yeah, uh, right? Garth Ennis. Garth Ennis, sorry. Um, everyone... Oh, excellent. Thank but you. Saying those things, do you, have you guys gotten commentary back from those companies? Well, the, the good thing is because we've been doing this for a while and because we have, you know, we meet some of these people and, you know, um, they really enjoy it. You oh, know, okay. if good. It isn't like I'm going up and saying, uh, Joe Quesada is a whore. You know, like, which he is, by the way. <laughs> yeah, who is this? But you can do it in a way that you can poke fun at something without like being like insulting. You know, like you can, you can like the uh, the gutters from last week where I poked fun at um, uh, Dynamite. Yeah. Um, who they actually will license anything. Um, another guy who runs the company and he found it funny. I'm like, that's good. Stop licensing shit. <laughs> I think too in this industry. 
I mean, the people who are making comics are the people who used to read comics, and they're they're fans as well as professionals. You know, there there is that enjoyment of work, of of what we do in the comic industry that we probably don't have in the accounting industry or you know the manufacturing zone or something like that. That you're saying people don't enjoy being accountants. <laughs> I'm saying I wouldn't enjoy being an accountant. But you also wouldn't get an accountant writing a parody musical about other accountants. <laughs> I think it's. I think that'd be funny. I think it's like we're, yeah. we're, we're allowed to use. Is anybody here an accountant? We're allowed to use the c word, Not like comic, you. like other people can't because that's our word. That's not your word. You know, I think <laughs> you're ripping off Family Guy. <laughs> no, the Family the. The Star Wars thing? That's what no, you're I am told. Nerf herder. That's what I'm saying. Nerf herder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But that's it. We're nerf herders, so we'll take a little more shit from us. Okay. Next question. Yes, madam. I'm sorry. I am not single. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like in Jeopardy, let them finish the question. <laughs> The story behind LFG is that Laura and I were uh, contracted by this company called Zboard. Um, Zboard does these gaming keyboard things, and they were launching their World of Warcraft um, gaming computer uh, keyboard thing. So they hired us to do a World of Warcraft-based parody comic kind of thing. So we said, "Well, shit, we like money. Why not?" <laughs> um, so we took their money and said, "Thank you, hey Bo Peep," and then look at me. Why are you looking away? <laughs> Um, so then what happened was is Laura and I spent a lot of time developing this comic and like we, we went a little yeah, overboard. It was supposed to be like a one-off or maybe once a month if the first one went okay. And, and we totally overbraced sort everything. Of and then we, we, made, we did the first page and we were on the phone and like, well shit this is too good for them. <laughs> um, so we bought ourselves under the contract. Um, never spoke to Zboard again, funny enough. Um, and just took it on our own. So, looking for group originally it was the name because we knew it, we wanted something to do with MMOs and it kind of. Um, now, though, as the comic has you know evolved and become much more than was it was originally intended to be, to me it's more like everyone is just trying to find acceptance, a group, find out who you are, and that's kind of how I see it now. Alex, thank you. <laughs> Next question, you again. Yes. Um, with Kale, I know they wanted him to be, or it seems like they wanted to be the king or something, or yep. that's his destiny. But is there like another plan for that, or is that just the plan? Like they're, yeah, we're gonna put you in power, or do they want to do something else, or is that, if you've mentioned that, is that gonna give away too much? I'm not gonna tell you anything. Okay. <laughs> um, let's just say there are plans, a lot of people have a lot of plans for Kale. And just because people seem to be working on the same side, toward the same goals, doesn't mean they are. So, Kale's gonna have some choices to make. Nick? Yes, Catboy. Uh, what, are, what is the significance of the two check marks on uh, Richard's uh, skull? <laughs> oh, the check mark eyebrows? Yeah, the check marks. Um, <laughs> where were the origin thing? Um, there are piercings that got ripped out. Okay. The microphone is on. They oh, can no, it's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Make something up. <laughs> Tell the real story. I think they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> when designing the character, when designing the, the cast, when you design a character, you don't design it in isolation. You design it in context. So in designing the characters, I didn't design Richard on his own. I designed Richard with Crunch and kale and Benny and such to get shapes and colors and sizes varied and compatible and whatever else. And as an undead warlock, I wanted more symbols of power on him than just the gem and just the fiery eyes. And I thought a facial 
mark, tattoo, disfigurement, something would be really cool. But also, it's something I have to be able to draw fuck a zillion times in a row. So giving him a really elaborate tribal tattoo would be ridiculous. But a couple of hash marks and a lightning bolt, I can pull that shit off. <laughs> so I did that. I colored them in, I, I have kind of a palette of, of power colors and character colors. Like, my use of colors is not random. I, I establish palettes for my different races, and I work within those. And Richard's colors, you'll see other characters who are wearing those kind of navies and wine reds and, you know, blood color gems and stuff are specifically chosen for a reason. Just as the golds, just as the earth tones, just as those sorts of things. Benny has similar colors of power. Uh, the Blood Rage have their own palette. That sort of thing goes on. Those gr the green is very specific as, as sort of a, as an outlet. Just to uh, introduce for a second, what you heard here, don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay, so what's going to happen is one day when we do tell the full backstory of Richard, I'm going to make something up. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the so other part. this was always planned. That's, <laughs> not, see, that's the other part of the other collaborative process. I know to throw things in there that he'll pick up on. Bunny. Bunny. Like, well, that was planned too. What? Are you listening? No, Bunny was, <laughs> Bunny was planned in the, in the fact that we needed a familiar. But whether it would have been another rabbit or the same Bunny, okay, yeah, it was planned a little while. Thank you. <laughs> Next question. This one's making me uncomfortable. Um, Richard, this has been bugging me. Do we see his flesh or his bone? What is it? What do you think? Have you seen the show? Have you seen the show? How about? A little bit. I have no idea what it is. Oh, yeah. I've, I've always assumed he just had pasty skin. He's undead. He's undead. I've always thought it was bone. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a bit of color, man. A bit of color. Yeah. I, I think, to me, I always saw it as just, you know, he. Well, because then there was that. bone, but then he also has a bit of, like, rotted off skin under like, there as well. Because like, sure. I remember there was that time. What? <laughs> Because remember there was that time you had that Marilyn Monroe shot? It looked, like he had it looked like he had flesh on his legs and it was the same color as his face. Uh, what the hell's going on out there? Well shit, we're running the party, are we? <laughs> Hi. When you open the door, it is. Why are they saying Bohemian Rhapsody? We've barricaded the door. They will not get in here, I swear to you. <laughs> I would show those fuckers down. What are they doing? <laughs> They're lined up. We, we moved the meta con information, the cosplay court cases in here after you because uh, Tim Buckley didn't show up and we had to... Tim Buckley's here? I was told he didn't have a paddle anymore. Shit, hang on. Let me see him. Wait, what? <laughs> no, not here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got my hopes up. I was gonna make him dress up for the cosplay people out there. Yeah, yeah. Tim Buckley toes. <laughs> so is it gonna be like that until the end of the panel? I'm gonna give him a few more minutes and then I'm gonna shut him up. So. Thank you. Do you want Do you want to hit them with this? <laughs> I've got a vavuzela filled with cement out there. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Or fucking vavuzela. Vavuzela. What else? Next question. You guys have been quiet. You guys have any questions? <laughs> Oh, what are you saying? Uh, oh my god, Shh. Go ahead. Yeah, you. Um, I've been wondering, which of the comics came first? Like, what order did they come in? Like, least I could do. Uh, another news, least I could do, looking for Baru, Gutters, Messiah. That's it. <laughs> yes? Uh, what is the progress of Messiah, by the way? What is Messiah? Who? What, you, what is? Where did you hear that from? <laughs> there is no such project that I will be doing with Boom Studios that will be announced in the next two weeks. That will be in stores only. Where are you getting this information from? <laughs> Just talking. Yeah. Just talking. I don't know. I don't know. Trash talk. There is no Messiah. It was John Diaz, the artist who did uh, Irredeemable. Who is talking? <laughs> <laughs> what does he have time to do, Messiah? What is Messiah? What? Next question. You with oh, uh, the hands. I don't. My wife does. <laughs> I'm 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 not happy, honestly, unless I have like 18 balls in the air, not like nads. Nads, he's just happy with six or seven. 
Um, I. It's like that marshmallow game. We just keep putting them in and then trying to. Show me some. I don't like my, you know, oh, if I was great. a kid today, they would be pumping me full of Ritalin and any other drug you could possibly imagine. I just, I'm not happy unless I have 15 things. Plus, it's nice that if I'm working on this thing I can do and I just can't think of anything, well, shit, I'll switch to something else, you know? So it's nice to be able to. But yeah, I need. beginning this was in. Beginning this was after, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, beginning this. So, yeah, a lot. Next question. Can I? Don't be shy. Ask anything. Yes. Now, you mentioned the movie. Is this going to be a wide release? Is it going to be select theaters? I mean, am I going to be able to go down the street and watch this? Where, where do you live? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, but so how about New York? Yeah. New York, yeah. Okay. Uh, Plus trip. Yeah. I know they're, right now, as far as I'm in the loop, they're going for like 12 American cities. Um, but if it does well, it'll spread, and, and like, regardless, I just want to get this thing on the Blu-ray. Um, yeah. That's my goal. So the theater release is like, it's, it's nice as a vanity thing, but... Yeah, the, I mean, the original concept was direct to DVD. And then if we could, you know, coming to, coming to a convention like Kineticon, or something like that, having an event showing where we rent a theater, and show it and have a Q&A and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, now we, we have the, the possibility of doing a, a limited release. Uh, so, yeah, it's coming. Yes, sir. Um, what would you say are the biggest influences in your writing? Um, the biggest influences. We're looking for oh, it's such a mash. Well, there's so much, right? Because I'm like, honestly, this might shock you guys, but I'm slightly into Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, but as poor the nerd. Stay back! Stay back! There is a giant glass house over everyone in this room. <laughs> yeah. You just shot a stone. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, <laughs> um, there's, you know, there's. Hey, Kettle, you're black. <laughs> there's. Four <laughs> Lord of the Rings, uh, all the I played all the animals. Uh, I'm a huge George R. R. Martin fan. Um, if you just get off his ass and write the fucking book. Uh, <laughs> number five. What is an asshole? Uh, Robert Jordan. Um, you know I love. I just love. I, lo I love. I love fantasy. I love the D. We grew up with this. Um, Lar way before me because he's older. You see. That was the, that's what we brainstormed the shadows. We realized we had so much. You know, all that, the movies, the comics, the books, the games, all that is in our mix. All that's influenced us to go into comics, to create our own, and it found its outlet in LFG. It's not, it, it, it can never just be just one thing, because all the new ones are still coming in and piling up on the old ones. So, we draw from a lot, you know, it's really, it's, we're, we're never running out of material anytime soon. Actually, this is another, uh, at least I could do one, is, uh, is there any uh, possibility there's going to be more Little Vader ones? Those yes. are always hilarious on top of things. Yeah, the, here's the thing with, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. Um, uh, Lars Gate. My second secret. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want to tell the kids. <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. Um, what was the question again? Little Vader. <laughs> the funny thing about Little Vader, um, is uh, Little Vader and Richard the same fucking character? <laughs> uh, when we created um, Looking for Groove, this Richard character was pretty much Vader transposed. So I get all these like sick jokes from him now. So if you notice, their, their dialogue is pretty much written the same. They're the same character. Um, so my bad. Um, but we will be seeing him from time to time. And... Did I hear your phone? Who was it? You have a question? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will see more than Hitler. Yes, we will see more than Hitler. Listen, I make a lot of Hitler jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Nazis are funny! They are. I, I always love being called an anti-Semite. It always makes me happy. Like, uh, at my bar mitzvah, I really thought about that hard. <laughs> you have a question, sir, with the hat? Um, you, you have a hat, yes. I... Well, you know, you mentioned uh, a lot of fantasy, and you know, on the LFG site, yeah. I see the list of books that you're reading and everything, and you're mm -hmm. still waiting for a memory of white. Have you read A Gathering Storm? Yes. 
I, Brandon Sanderson is probably one of the nicest guys in the world, but he had impossible shoes to fill. Yeah. And there's no way, it felt like he was just, well, like, it, it's, a, it's a good book, don't get me wrong, but it felt like he was just writing this book point form. Like, these are the notes from Jordan and his widow, and these are the notes, and he just had to fill everything in. So yeah, it wraps up a whole bunch of stuff, but really too cleanly, I find. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good, you yeah. know. Madame. Yeah, um, on the least I could do forms, do you guys read through the comments that people leave there? Uh, you want the real answer or the big answer? The real answer. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell big you the answer. Yeah! <laughs> I love your guys' feedback! <laughs> I, I just don't have time. I spend a lot of time going through forums. Just, but then what I do, I just need to like put my head down and weep softly in the night. <laughs> I was really happy with the Dora strip this week. I thought I did a good job on the Dora. And I had a few minutes one night before I went to bed. I thought, I'm going to hop on and see what people thought of Dora. I hop on, and besides the obligatory, I'm the first poster, um, <laughs> it immediately degraded into a, into a, like a pissing match over Arizona political views. It's like, and, and Starkey, oh, this is going to be a political strip. Like, they do this all the time. It's like, when did we last make a fucking political comment? It's a Dora joke. It's just a Dora joke. <laughs> Lighten up. Wait, it degraded it, from first to like, to like down. people pissing on each other yeah. about. R. Kelly style. It's America. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's like so. but did you actually enjoy the comic? Let, you know, did you, did you like the joke? Did you like the drawing? Did you like, no, they're too busy pissing on each other. It's like, I sh this is why I, it's gonna be another four months before I read a comment. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm being told that we have run out of time. You're not but technically out of time, you, but there is a gigantic line. It's like, if you wanted to end early, that would be so awesome. Wait, who would that help exactly? And what's in there for me and my 50 friends here? Huh? They were screaming at you me. Can, if, you, if you want to, you can stay in here for another 10 minutes. I will not stop you. We could piss them by for 10 more minutes. It would be totally awesome, and I would I would love you. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you one of the yelling people, or are you one of the con? I am I am I am the co-head of panels. Okay. You have a pretty mouth, so you know what? I'm going to do you a favor. And then you can do me a favor. <laughs> We're going to cut it early, guys. Um, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.